Hello everyone, this is Damon with PicSnub Software. In this video, I'm going to be discussing a brand new face recognition cropping system that we have for Photoshop. I'm just going to go into Photoshop here and show you when you install this, it'll be in two menu items. The first one is disabled because we don't have an image and this is what you would run on a single image and to set up your presets that you're going to batch process. And the second mode is the batch processor to apply that to as many images as you want. So I'm first going to open an image here. And then I'm just going to run Portrait Crop and discuss the main adjustments and options inside of it. So we've got a pretty basic user interface and it's pretty self-explanatory. In the top you have presets, which is just a few that it installs by default, but really you'll want to make your own. And there's an area where you create your own presets. I'll discuss this later. And then there's the basic composition adjustments. Then you've got your um, aspect ratio where you set up the print dimensions and then any resampling you'll want to do. And then you can also save as a copy so you could apply multiple crops and then save off as a copy. And then the settings you're going to use at startup, whether it remembers the last settings or the default settings. And I'll discuss this a little bit later. So the first thing I really want to get into is the main adjustments. And this is pretty easy to um, grasp. But what this has is a zoom and then an X position and a Y position. So I'll just zoom in all the way here to 200. And you can see this is pretty close on in onto the face. And then I'll move the Y position down. And so these coordinates here are all based on the center of the face. So 18 to 200 is your zoom range. And I made that kind of similar, I guess, the number wise to what you'd expect from a lens. Now, don't get too caught up in thinking that a 200 here has to look exactly like what you would shoot with a 200 millimeter zoom. That's going to vary based on, you know, of course, how close you are to the subject and whether you got full frame or a crop sensor, it doesn't matter. But two, what 200 does is the software is going to recognize the size of the face and 200 on the zoom is roughly um, the height of the person's head. And so it doesn't matter how far the image was zoomed in originally or where the person is at, 200 is roughly going to be the size of the head. Now the Y position lets you go from 50 to 90 and this is percentage from the bottom of the photo to the top. So on the lower adjustment, the middle of the face, and it's usually the middle of the eyes roughly is where the per middle of the person's face is. But in this case, we are 50% of the way up from the bottom to the top. If I go up to 90, that puts it at 90% from the bottom to the top. Left and right works the same way. You can go 20 to 80, and that's reference from the left side of the image to the right side of the image, and that's 80% of the way from the left to the right where the middle of the face is. So somewhere right in here is 80% on the X, and we are 90% on the Y. I'm just going to show you if I zoom out here, the center of the face is still maintaining that coordinate of 80-90. We're just zooming out. So everything is referenced to the center of the face. And so this is important because if you're shooting a batch of images and you don't shoot them in camera the same way every time, you can set up your compositions and this is automatically going to find the face and make those same type of compositions for you. So in the presets, there's just seven presets that it comes with because really I just wanted to give the users an idea of how they worked and everybody's going to want to pretty much create their own based on their own needs. But I will show you this bottom one here called face recognition check. This is just going to set it to a zoom of 200 with your Y and X positions at 50-50. This is when you run it, if you just want to see how well it's detecting the face, just go to that preset and that's going to make a square crop and put the face pretty much right in the middle. Then you've got other presets you can use as a starting point. So let's say you wanted composition similar to this, but maybe you wanted, to, in your case, to zoom out a little bit more. And then move the um, Y position down. You can also manually type in values to here. 
And I'll point out right now, if you're on a Windows system and you type in here and it makes a beeping sound, that I'll show you in a different video how to turn that off. That is actually being done by Windows itself, by the sound settings. It's using this, um, well, the way Photoshop was designed with these JavaScript on enter commands for these boxes, those trigger a Windows event. But you can turn that off because that is kind of annoying if you type in here and hit enter and it beeps at you. So that's pretty much it with the um, zoom positions. And once you get something you like, you can go up and create your own preset. And I'll just call this 8x10 because say you don't want to use the long preset names. Because if you're batch processing, you can actually put this as an extension onto your file name. So you probably don't want those long names. So you'll make your own how you want it and then call it what you want. So now you see we've got a live preset and I can come in here anytime and get that preset and apply it to any image. So the next thing we have here is empty space fill. So I'm just going to zoom out here and show you. If you were making compositions, and in this case the camera was cropped pretty close to the top of the head. So let's say you want a composition similar to this and you're applying it to a bunch of images and some of your images that camera cropped it higher so you're getting actual image in that space but if you come across an image where it's cropped closer in camera you may have empty space and in a batch process if you're doing a lot of images there's different situations when you'll want different things so we've got transparency we've got white or we've got high visibility now what the high visibility is good for is if you're exporting flattened images and you don't want transparency and you um, want to be able to easily scan through your folder and see if some of them you were cropped too close in camera and so you have no information on one of the borders you can easily spot those images out and then you can go back in and recrop those and we have white which now this is good for if let's say you have high key images or images that are pretty much put on a pure white background. Let's say you're a web developer and you need to make different compositions from those images. You might not care if you go outside the borders, but you want to keep it white so it matches the rest of your image. You would want to use that. And then transparency, if you are shooting green screen images and you've extracted those and you're just pre-composing those to go into, let's say, sports posters or something, then you would um, want to fill that empty space with transparency. Okay, so next we've got the, um, before we do that, I'm just going to crop something that doesn't have the, the border there. So you've got your print units. And if you change this aspect ratio, you're not going to see it immediately change on the screen. And the reason why is because often you'll want to type in both values. So let's say we want to do a four by six. After you've typed in those values, once you hit recrop, it's going to now recrop to that new aspect ratio. And then it's going to show you the number of pixels it's going to crop to once you hit apply. And so I'll show you here if we go 8 by 12, and note this 1161 by 1742. So if we change from 4 to 6 to 8 by 12, we've got that same exact pixel dimension. That's because we're not resampling, we're just cropping because this resample is turned off. However, if you change your aspect ratio, you can now see it's 1394 by 1742. Then we hit recrop and we've now got our new aspect ratio applied. So if you want to force um, images to a specific dimension, in pixels, what you'll need to do is click this resample. And notice here we got a, a pixels per inch of 174.2. And that's because it's just doing some math and it figures based on our composition, we want 8 inches by 10 inches. In order to achieve that composition, we've got 174.2 pixels per inch. If we resample, we can now go change that. Let's say we want 8 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch. We've now got 8 by 10 with 2400 pixels by 3000 pixels, so it's going to resample the image. 
Now notice on this scaling, this is telling us when we apply how much it's going to need to scale that image to achieve 8 by 10 by 300 or 2400 pixels by 3000. So it's going to have to scale it up by 72%. 100% means it's the exact same size. Now 172% means we're going to upscale that image. So we're going to degrade the quality by doing that. And we've got um, our interpolation modes for the resampling. So whether you downsize or upsize, you can set both of these. And in this case, we're upsizing, so it would use what's in the upsize dropdown. If the scale was below 100%, it would use what's in the downsize dropdown. But this is the same exact interpolation modes that is in Photoshop. It's just using Photoshop's native interpolation to do this. And usually if you leave these at automatic, it's going to be good enough for most cases, but you can change those if you need. And I'll show you here, if we zoom, let's zoom in a little further. You notice the scaling percentage is changing. That's because we're trying to get 3,000 pixels tall in a smaller portion of the image. So the further we zoom in, the more it has to upscale. And the further we zoom out, the lower this number becomes. So just keep that in mind. And if we're not resampling, the scaling is always going to be 100 because it's not going to resample. But if we zoom in and out, the number of pixels for the output image is going to change. So if I zoom in, these values get smaller because all we're doing is cropping. In the settings to use at startup, you can choose to use the defaults preset, which is this preset called 01 defaults or you can use the last settings used and that's going to remember whatever you did last and apply those same settings to the next image. You can also save it as a copy and I'll just save it here and I'm going to change the zoom and I'm going to save as copy again. So you see we have that copy we just saved and I'll call this one copy2 I'll hit save as copy again just so we can see that. Now you see we've got two different crops we just saved. So if you just have one or two images that you want to go through and flip through some presets and save different crops, that's one way of usually applying your own presets to just a few images. Now with this defaults, I'm going to back up here a minute because I just thought of something else. With this defaults preset, if you don't want to remember the last settings, but you want to always start with a certain preset, you can actually go into your um, create or remove presets. So say this is the crop you wanted to always use for your default. You can hit save settings as default. So now I'm going to go to a different, let's go to something more dramatically different. So now, now whenever it starts up, it's going to use this preset called defaults, and that is the one that we just saved. And you can see those, that zoom factor that we just saved in there. And one more thing about the presets is it's going to store all of these settings, including whether it resamples your interpolation modes and your print dimensions, as well as your empty space fill. All of this is stored in the preset. So keep that in mind if you're going to batch process, make sure you set up all of your settings exactly like you want and that will be what is applied during batch processing except this empty space fill which I'll show you in a minute if you're using the portrait crop native batch processor that batch processor you can change this that way if you have images with or without transparency you don't have to make separate presets so that pretty much covers the basic features of the user interface I'm now going to show you the batch processor and I do cover this in a lot more detail in another video. Actually, a couple videos I have that, that discuss this. But just to go through this real quick, you're going to pick a source and a save folder. So this is where you would apply your settings to a whole folder of images. I'm not actually going to run this in this video. Watch those other videos if you want to see more in depth. 
but you'd come in here and select the presets that you want and then the file options for how to save them, what format to save, the save quality for in JPEG. Um, and then this empty space fill, this is what I was discussing. If you're in the native portrait crop batch processor, you can switch the empty space fill and it's going to use whatever you select here instead of what's in these presets. Now, if you're batch processing from an action, because you can record portrait crop into an action on um, not the batch processor, but the normal portrait crop mode that we were in prior, you can record that into an action. And if you do that, the empty space fill will be whatever was recorded in your action. Again, I show that in another video. There's multiple ways to batch process. And so watch all the other videos and you'll see that. But this is a way you can apply all of your settings to thousands of images and just just hit run and then walk away from your computer and come back when they're done. I mean this is why I'm so excited about this plugin because this literally can save you hundreds and hundreds of hours if you're doing high volumes of images. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you're interested at all in portrait crop, please be sure to visit our website that is pixnub.com.